Hey guys, welcome back. The long awaited bib video has arrived. We're gonna make these awesome, adorable bibs. I have a baby size and an adult size. Uh, being that I've owned a home daycare for over 20 years, I have made a lot of these bibs and I assure you that these will outlast their childhood. They're the perfect size for a little baby or a big toddler. These, this size is great for an adult. It'll cover a chest, you know. It's not so huge that it's like an apron, um, but it's just the perfect little size that they can roll it up, put it in their handbag or whatnot. So anyways, I've made lots of these. I've sold tons of these. They work really well, super easy pattern. I hope you guys like it. Um, if you are not into making your own patterns you can always click the description head over to my Etsy shop and buy the set of both of these patterns together so anyways let's go ahead and get started all right gang so for the next step we're gonna go ahead and cut out our patterns if you do not like making patterns you can go ahead and click the link in the description and buy this pattern set from my Etsy page I hand cut all of these on freezer paper so you don't have to do any of the work but if you'd like to uh, make your own pattern I definitely re recommend freezer paper just because it has this nice shiny side that you can stick to your iron and it'll help you cut out a cleaner pattern um, for the smaller uh, um, baby bib the uh, I cut out a piece of paper which is 10 inches by 16 inches so that's roughly um, the size of my child's bib and then for my adult bib the rectangle that I cut out is 15 inches by 21 inches so as you can see that's the size of my adult bib. Um, the easiest way to do this is if you actually have a bib that you already like, you can go ahead and just trace it. But if you gotta wing it from scratch, like me, what you're gonna wanna do is first fold your paper in half because we want this to be a symmetrical pattern. And as you can see, my bibs are really just kind of like a rounded rectangle. So I would just take off, keep the top kind of square and come in like this and take off uh, these corner edges here. And then again, bringing it back around to the bottom like that. And then I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and clean this up real quick. Now I always say, you know, you should have a piece of piece of scissors, sorry, a pair of scissors that are just for paper and a pair of scissors that are for uh, fabric. But when it comes to a rotary cutter, I use it to cut patterns quite often because I can always change out the blade if it gets dull. All right, now let's open this up, see how it looks. That looks pretty good. It's a little squared off up here. But overall, this makes a nice bib shape. The only thing we need to do is put um, a circle in the center for the neck hole. For the children's bib, you're gonna want this circle to be about four inches in diameter. Uh, for the adult bib, you're gonna want this circle to be six inches in diameter. And the easiest way to do that is to just go find a coffee mug, a small dinner plate, something like that. Put it right here in the center and draw your circle. And then all you have to do is write on this little folded line here that we had, make a little snip in the top so that you end up with this shape right here. All right guys, welcome to the other side of the table. This is my awesome new uh, big ironing mat. I'm sad, but a little happy to report that the ugly ironing board finally did take a trip to the dump. <laughs> uh, but it, I don't need it anymore. You know, I don't iron clothes. I iron big flat things like quilts. So this is a much, much better solution for me. So for my adult fabric, I chose this great uh, Hobby Lobby Brother Sisters design print that's Christmassy, but not overly Christmassy. I like the big pink flowers. Um, and then for the back, I just chose a nice neutral um, red. I believe this one is called Crackle. And uh, I like to do it this way for the adults. I like to give them one side that's a little bit of fun and the other side that's a little more simple. Um, for the for the little kids uh, bib, I did the same Christmassy pattern and then I went ahead with Buffalo Check because you know, it's fun, it's very popular. You know, you can wear it throughout the year and it's fairly neutral. So I'm just gonna make sure that all of these pieces are ironed nice and flat. And once you get them that way, you're just gonna take your freezer paper pattern. And I should mention, you don't have to do this with freezer paper. I prefer freezer paper for this reason. It sticks, but if you don't have freezer paper, you can just use regular paper and you know maybe use a couple pins or whatnot um, to hold it to your fabric. So there's one. 
And as you can see, I'm gonna be flipping this one upside down because when we cut these, I want mirror images. So here's my children's pattern ready to go. And here is my adult size, nice and flat. And when you're working with freezer paper, you just want to give it a little bit of pressure. Push it down just a little. The uh, heat from the iron will just kind of slightly melt that coating on the back and make it stick. It will not leave any residue. I've been using freezer paper for, uh, like I said, almost 20 years that I've been doing this. I have never, ever, ever had a problem with it leaving anything on the paper. And I have patterns that I've used over and over and over. Sometimes if you have one that you've used maybe, you know, 50 times it'll start to lose a little bit of the stick um, but for the most part the only thing you got to worry about with freezer paper patterns is just make sure if you use it often that you're not shearing off the sides because eventually you're going to end up changing the shape of your pattern so you know every you know every couple years or so if you've been using the same pattern it's not a bad idea uh to to make a fresh one just to make sure you're not losing your shape over time all right we're going to take these two babies over to the cutting table and get started this this is when a rotary cutter becomes a wonderful tool because you could stack as many as, you know, four or five bibs uh, here and cut them all out at one time. Just make sure, like I said, you're turning the fabrics um, so that you cut a mirror image. So you want, if these two are together, then you want them wrong sides together. I'm gonna switch to my little tiny rotary cutter. There's links to both of these down below if you wanna ask Santa to put one in your stocking. They are wonderful tools and the, you know, the big one is great for cutting large little pieces of fabric, <laughs> large little pieces of fabric, great for cutting large pieces of fabric. And this little one is great for getting into tiny little angles like this. So just make sure you put that nice little slit up the top and there we go. We have two perfect mirror images. It's gonna be nice and easy to sew these together. A lot of times with the children's size, I won't even bother with pins. Um, just because it's a small piece of fabric, it tends to cling well enough. But this one, these larger ones, they're a little floppier. Um, so I'm gonna put just two pins in here. Two pins just in the base right here to hold it together. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put two pins over here on the side. This is gonna be our start and stop point. So we're gonna leave an opening just big enough to get a couple fingers through, because we are gonna sew this. If you've done my dog bandana or my apron pattern, I like to sew things inside out, turn them right side out. It gives it a nice clean finish. So we just need enough here that we'll be able to get our hands in and turn it inside out. Um, and we will be starting here, back stitching, coming down and around, up and around the collar, up and back down and back stitching uh, to finish it off. All right, gang, here we are at the sewing machine. Um, I'm using isocord thread as always. Uh, the color number is 1912. Um, it doesn't really matter what thread you use in this part because this is gonna be an inside stitch. So when we turn it right sides out, nobody's gonna see this part. Um, but when we stitch it closed, you'll want something that kind of blends in with your fabric so that that last uh, closure stitch doesn't really stand out too much. So I chose this nice, uh, beautiful red from Isocord. And if you've been watching me for any length of time, you'll know that Isocord is pretty much the only thread that I sew with. Unless I'm doing something like that really calls for a specific type of thread, if you see me sewing, it's Isocord. All right, so as you can see, I've got my pins to mark my start and stop position. Um, for this uh, for this project, you could use a quarter inch foot if you like, or just any basic foot and just run right off the edge of your presser foot. I'm just gonna start off by back stitching a little because I'm gonna be sticking my fingers through this. I wanna make sure that this seam um, has a little bit of a hold to it. I don't wanna accidentally pop that seam open when I'm turning it inside out. So I'm gonna bring you in so you can see what I'm doing a little bit closer. All right, so as you can see, I'm just going to back stitch a tiny bit like we talked about and I'm going to come all the way around this bottom edge just running my presser foot right along the side of the fabric. I'm going to slow down a little when I get to a curve because no matter what if you're sewing a curve 
it tends to bunch. When you cut the fabric across the bias like that, it, meaning you're cutting diagonally across the woven threads, there's always going to be a little bit of a ripple. If you're worried about it, put your needle down, lift your presser foot up, and smooth it out. Don't try to just run through the ripple. You're just going to make it worse. Give yourself a second to smooth it out. Try to stay as close to that edge as you can because you don't want uh, to lose that, that piece of fabric on the other side. It's always going to slip and shift a tiny bit. These are woven fabrics, so they do have some stretch and some movement and some give to them. That what's, what's, that's what makes them so great to work with. But you also have to beware, you know, of your limitations. So as you can see, my pattern is starting to shift a little. So I'm just going to stop and readjust and keep going. I'm using my hand sprayed out like this to try to hold this rounded piece um, nice and flat because it makes it easier. I can just turn my wrist. I'm just turning my wrist to come around that corner and keep it nice and smooth. All right, when we get just about a quarter inch from the corner, I'm gonna drop my needle. I'm gonna lift my presser foot. That way we don't lose where we were and make our stitches loose or sloppy. And then I'm gonna drop it back down. We're gonna come down to the other corner and do the same thing. Now, because we're sewing inside a circle, like I said, with the shifting and whatnot, it's a little bit tricky. Don't worry if your neckline does not come out a perfect circle. As long as you have a nice, you know, quarter inch seam or so in here, you can always go a little bit slower to make it easier on yourself. I'm a bit of a lead foot. It's hard for me to go slow. Anyways, you know, just go slow. Take your time. Come around the circle nice and easy. Doesn't have to be perfectly circular. When it's around your child's neck, nobody in the entire world is going to notice if it's a little bit off, okay? So don't stress yourself out. Don't bother taking the time to rip out any seams. We're going to come right up here to this corner. We're going to drop our foot, turn the corner, and come back up to the top. And we're almost done already. Can you believe how easy this is? All right. And here we go, down and around. Bam. Back stitching again to make sure this opening is nice and sturdy. I'm going to take my pins out. And now we are done with the sewing. All we have to do is make a couple snips. These are my absolute favorite sewing scissors of all time. They are also down in the description below and in my Art Quilters Christmas wish list. What I'm doing here is I'm just cutting off these squared off corners here at the neckline just to reduce the bulk so when we turn it inside out we don't have a big chunky pile of fabric wedged into that little tiny spot. The other thing I'm going to do is just around the circle, kind of like a clock, you know, at a couple different spaces, cut out a little notch. Anytime you're sewing curved seams, especially if you're going to be sewing garments or something like that, um, this is something you will get very used to doing because this is how you keep those seams from kind of buckling and rippling uh, when you turn something right side out. All right, so there we go. We've clipped, as you can see, I did one, two, three, four, five, something like that, four, five, six, you know, just a handful of little snips around just so when we turn this out, it doesn't put stress on the uh, thread in the circle. And then we've cut off these four little corners. So I'm going to go ahead and do this with the adult size bib, and then we will turn these inside out and see how beautiful they look. All right, gang, here we have our bibs. You can just take a closer look see how they are. What I'm going to do right now is a little bit of quality control. I want to flip it over and make sure that I caught both edges of the fabric all the way around. If you came in a little too tight somewhere and you missed a little bit, it's fine. Just go back and run a second stitch. Both of these look really good. So this is a great time to go find yourself a sharp pointy thing that won't melt with your iron. I prefer a knitting needle. You can use a chopstick or even a dull pencil. What you're going to want to do is find your little opening and get your fingers up in there. I like to go all the way up here into the opposite neckline. 
get my fingers up there. This is one of the reasons that I like to have a nice wide neck band is because it makes it easy for me to turn it inside out. When I used to do the tiny little baby bibs, it would get real tricky and, and hurt my hands up in this part. So I'm gonna put my knitting needle up in there and use it to turn this inside out. There we go. Knitting needles are great for ironing. Anytime you wanna press out some seams, poke out a couple corners, and the best thing about them is because they're metal, uh, you can hit it with the iron and you're not gonna have any trouble. All right, so here's our adult bib. I'm just gonna shake it out a little. That looks great. So I'm gonna find my opening here and I'm gonna slip my knitting needle in and I'm just gonna gently use it to work out this seam. The old school way of doing this would be to take a sewing, uh, a safety pin or a needle and push it from the outside, pulling that seam out gently. I don't, I don't have the time or the energy or the strength in my hands to do it that way. So I'm just gonna use my knitting needle from the inside out. I think it's much, much easier. All right, so once you get a nice little shape there, we're going to iron it nice and flat and we're just going to go around all of the seams gently poking them out like that and ironing them nice and flat. If you end up with a little spot that comes out say like maybe more slightly at a right angle than you'd like, if it's small a lot of times you can just tuck it back in with your fingernail and press it with your iron. If it's large where it really kind of bothers you and makes the bib look a little more boxy than you wanted, just turn it inside out and go ahead and run over that stitch one more time and just cut off that little corner. It's a piece of cake. All right, so I'm taking my time in the neck. I don't want to just go right over this. As you can see, it's slightly rippled. That's why we put those notches in there. Anytime you sew a curved seam like this, especially an inside out one, it's going to get a little bit of a ripple. Just take your time and go slow, and it'll come out nice and flat. You can see a tiny bit of a ripple right there. Nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to see it. It's going to be on the back of a child's neck. It doesn't matter at all. Do not let those little tiny things bother you. There's lots of professional sewers out there, you know, who are like ridiculously sticklers for the details. I like a nice clean product, but I'm also not uh, crazy enough to worry about the teeniest, tiniest little things that don't affect the quality of my product and nobody's ever gonna notice. This is still a really well-made bib that's gonna last for years, regardless if it has one teeny tiny little crease in the back of the neck. Now, as you can see, I am babying this seam. And the reason I'm babying this seam is because this is where we're gonna stitch it closed. I don't want to see a big chunk of pink overlap on my black side, and I don't want a big chunk of black on my other side. So I'm just gonna take a minute. This is also the spot where my nice little tag is gonna go. So I wanna make sure that that area looks clean and pretty. And then the next thing, the only other thing I gotta do is I'm gonna take my tag. Once I have this pressed out the way I like, I like to slide my tag down to the um, bottom edge of that seam it's just it makes a nice little marker for me too then i know where to start and stop i will put one little pin in here so i don't lose my tag and then all we have to do is go back to the machine machine and stitch this small little space closed and then we're going to add our closure and then we are completely done all right guys i'm going to be switching my thread to this beautiful deep green number 5866 from isacord um, and the reason i'm switching my thread is because i want i have red thread on my bobbin so that it doesn't show up on this red side and then i'm going to do green thread on the top so i have a nice uh, stitch that blends in with my other fabric so just bear with me let me wind this through real quick sometimes i think i could win a contest for uh world's fastest machine threading. <laughs> Gotten pretty good at it over 20 years. All right, here we go. Now, I am going to try to bring my stitch. I am not doing a quarter inch stitch. I want to get this right up on that, that edge as far as I can go because I don't want it flopping open. I don't want my tag falling out and I certainly don't want to see any raw edges. 
So right up against that edge, catching both layers of fabric with just a little bit of a back stitch at the beginning and the end. You don't need too much just because it's just holding into place. So as you can see, that green blended in really well and you can't even see the red on the back at all. That's what we want and my tag is in there nice and tight and there's no big gap uh, flopping open here. All right, gang, here's our bibs. They look absolutely wonderful. I'm super happy with how these came out. Um, the two types of closures that I tend to use for children, I always, always, always use snaps. I really like to use pearl buttons. Um, but I don't have any right now. So you can buy, you know, these great little snaps. They're super cheap. You know, they usually come with a little contraption like this where you put each piece in and then you just bang it with a hammer, you know, or you can buy one of these clamps. Uh, the trick is, is that the little teeth here need to line up inside the little groove. And then when you put pressure on it, the teeth bend outward, holding them together. Um, the one thing to be mindful about the snaps is that you got to make sure you put them in the correct direction on your bib so that your snap lines up and actually snaps shut. So what I like to do first is poke, poke it through. I don't know if you can see that. I like to poke the sharp point through and line the snap up before I even stick it into the clamp. Then I'll put it into the clamp press it shut. The clamp is definitely worth the purchase if you're going to make more than a couple. As you can see, we've got a nice snap and then you have to make sure that you use the opposite piece because there is a male piece and a female piece. So not to be overly graphic, you know, but the male piece has the little part that sticks up and the female piece has the hole. So we're going to make sure See the sticking up part? So the whole, the female piece we want on the opposite side so they can snap together. So I, what I like to do is overlap, put a little pressure so I can see that little nub and then I use my snap and I just push it right around that little nub that I marked so I know that my snap's gonna line up fairly center. Again, if your snap is off by a little bit, not a big deal, it's still gonna close the bib shut and nobody's gonna care. All right, and then just line this up making sure I'm putting it correct side down. And then I will use my clamp to clamp it shut. Hopefully got a good connection. Every once in a while, if you're using cheap snaps or old snaps that might be bent out of shape, you may have a prong sticking out. You don't want that. This is gonna go on a baby. You don't want anything sharp or pointy. So if you do get it where you have a little prong sticking out that you can't manage to bend back under, I highly recommend taking some pliers, pulling the snap off. That's one thing I will take and undo. I also like to give it a yank. I'm selling these nine times out of 10. So I don't want this person to pay $10, love this bib, go home and then be like, oh, it's a piece of junk, the snap didn't last. So this looks great, nice and sturdy. Now for the adult bibs, I tend to use Velcro. I do not like using Velcro for children's bibs because these are going to go through the wash. They get caught on their clothes. You know, everybody's dealt with that before with your kids' laundry. It's not fun. Uh, for the adult bibs, the reason I use the Velcro is because quite often I have sold these to, say, a gentleman who's taking care of his elderly wife. He may have arthritis. Little tiny snaps may not be easy for his hands to use. Or if this is an adult who's taking it on and off themselves, you know, if they're old enough to be using an adult bib, then they probably, you know, don't necessarily have the best fine motor control. And I want to make this easy for them. So if you noticed, I peeled the backing off this. I do typically tend to use um, sticky Velcro. I feel like this is the way I tend to think about this. Most likely they're gonna be wearing this because it's almost Christmas. You know, I want the softer side facing towards their skin as much as possible because Velcro can be a little, you know, scratchy. Um, but luckily, because this is an adult bib, unlike a child, if it's itching their neck, they can vocalize that. So I use the sticky part just because it's really great at holding it in place. I can get a good look at how it's gonna go. I'm holding it when I unpeel it. And then I'm gonna to go to my machine and just run a little stitch using the same coordinating colors so you don't see my stitches and then we're all done. All right guys, just one quick tip about working with Velcro. Because it is Velcro, 
and it, you know, is fairly clingy and grabby, um, sometimes you will miss a few stitches. It seems to want to just grab your thread. So I like to just double stitch everything in case I slipped a few stitches. And, uh, you know, sometimes with the teeth side of the Velcro, your stitches may not look like perfectly clean and nice just because they get caught up in the teeth. But honestly, there's really not a lot you can do about that. So it's just one of those little things you shouldn't bother worrying about. You know, when it comes out, like I said, since I used the red thread on the back, you can't even see it. It's a piece of cake. It's held on well. It's nice and sturdy. So all we got to do is tack down this other side and we are good to go. All righty. Now what we're gonna do is snip the threads and take one final look. All right, guys, what do you think? This covers me really nicely. It covers my whole chest area without too much trouble. I've got, you know, a couple inches below my chest line for more coverage. If you're like me, your shirts have stains all across here. I could probably use one of these, but I tend to wear an apron instead. If you prefer to use an apron instead of a bib, check out my awesomely easy apron video. Patterns for that are also available on my Etsy page. But anyways, I hope you guys loved this project. It's super easy, super cute, makes a great gift. You could even make one for like grandma and baby that are matching you could make one for grandpa with his favorite sports team the sky's the limit and it's the easiest project you could ever make so i hope you guys enjoyed it as always if you're new thank you for joining us if you like fast easy simple patterns please check out my page subscribe and all that good stuff if you're returning i love you i hope you love this project i know i've been planning it for a long time so i'm happy i finally got this one out to you you guys love making the dog bandanas so much i know you'll really enjoy these bibs so take care y'all i hope you have a wonderful um thanksgiving and i hope to see you soon